first, we meet Aldo Locurto, an Italian doctor of medicine who has written a unique handbook for healthcare workers in the Amazonian jungle. Deep in the Amazonian rainforest lies the Zingu River. It forms the boundary for the lands of the Asurini people. For six months of the year, Locurto leaves his medical studies in Italy to make this inhospitable land his home. But it was here he found his purpose in life. The first was giving a sense to my profession. And the second, that is important, the surrounding here is very rich for me. And uh, every day there is something that I can learn and I, I can note, I can study. Aldo's studies have revealed the struggle the Asurinis have just to survive. Their world is changing fast and many fear disappearing. When the white people arrived in the early 70s, the Asurinis numbered several hundred. Now there are just 72. But Locurto is not just an observer. He gets his hands dirty. He helps. I am no priest because some, sometimes someone thinks that I am a priest, I am religious. I am a Christian, but I am, at first I think I am a doctor. Locurto is one of only eight doctors working with Indians in this part of Amazonia. He gives his services free of charge, and in return, the Asurini offer him the chance to practice the type of care seldom encountered in Western medicine. The risk is that uh, in the future, doctors will be so specialized that they will not look at the patient. They, they will look uh, at the part of the body where you are healed. It's Locurto's view that doctors see only the patient's disease and forget they have a body and a mind and that the symptoms may be part of a deeper imbalance. Although major diseases and injuries like cancer, tuberculosis, and fractures need modern medicines, Locurto recognizes traditional remedies are of value, and the role played by the village shaman, a mixture of doctor and priest, has a vital part to play in the tribe's long-term survival. When there is a person who is very sick, the shaman uses his kind of medicine, traditional medicine, and uh, he knows that uh, there, there are limits to his uh, medicine. And uh, I also know that I, I have limits in my knowledge. And so sometimes uh, we meet uh, together and treat the patient that are very, very sick. <laughs> he wants to... Uh, uh, liberate the, the person from the bad spirits that uh, are in the, in the body of, of, of the sick person. So I ap uh, apply an injection, for example, and he continues uh, uh, singing or uh, praying and trying to help him spiritually. The relationship with the shaman in Amazonia is not easy. They don't want to uh, explain to anybody what kind of uh, uh, medicine they use of traditional plants. So I was very curious. I started to study this kind of plants. And the project he's developed from the study of these plants has won him a Rolex award. When Locurto first came to Brazil to work with lepers more than 10 years ago, he quickly learned the first lesson of third world medicine. No matter which treatment you prescribe, if the patient can't afford it, there's no point. So he began looking at traditional remedies based on a combination of Indian culture and rainforest plants and found they were often effective. With the growing help and support of the Indians, he's researched more than 1,000 medical plants found in the forest and observed how the Indians use them. From that work, has come his healthcare manual. The book is a very illustrated uh, handbook of health education. I think the, the most interesting uh, uh, part is that at the end of each illness, I show that it is possible to treat the sickness using treatment of white men uh, or treatment with medical plants. His handbook, aimed primarily at healthcare workers, will be the first devoted to Indians and their ailments.
more than a thousand will be published in Portuguese and distributed free throughout Brazilian Amazonia. But medical research is only one part of Locurto's work. His fascination with Indian culture takes in all aspects of their lifestyle. And in particular, their pottery paintings, complex designs that set the Asurini apart from other tribes. <laughs> I collected more than 45 designs. Uh, this, this, in this last travel, I was sure that I have finished my work. And today I found another kind, kind of new design. I had to photograph again. Village life may seem relatively unaltered, but once the white man arrives, things can change fast, especially on the surface. They like our clothes uh, because they are re uh, repaired from uh, insect bites. Uh, but it is easy, for example, to see a young woman uh, which has a shirt and on the back uh, she is naked. Here it is quite normal. I think that, uh, that uh, the, the, the only risk in this period that they have is the physical, uh, the physical destruction. That threat's a real one. There are almost no Asurinis between 10 and 20 years of age, a generation lost to disease and prejudice. Children are now surviving, though. But what about their culture? The Asurini is very, very rich as ceremony. Sometimes they continue for one month, day and night. I think their ceremonies not easily will be changed, but it depends uh, uh, from the degree of contact with white men. Ultimately, their survival will depend, at least in part, on the protection offered by people such as Lucurto. But how do the Asurinis view their would-be protector? They think that I am a person who doesn't like walking. I am not able to use bow and arrow. I am not able to do a canoe. So for them, I am, I am a man incomplete. I am, I am a very strange man. To most people, La Cuerto's life is strange. He'll never get rich, and he's often lonely. Living in the Amazon may sound attractive, but the reality is sapping heat, murderous insects, and a large measure of discomfort. It's not the easy, comfortable life he could lead, but it's the one he's chosen, and many Amazonian Indians will be thankful for that.